By replacing the real storage implementation with a mocked equivalent, we managed to get most of our tests into a passing state. At this stage we can reliably say that if we have nothing in the list, or only one game in the list, that our system is working as intended. Things get a little bit more complex when we want to add new items to an existing list. It's time to bring back into play the test that's been giving us the most problems throughout these last few videos. When I do this, I can see that this test is still failing, and the reason for this is, as we've seen, all we're really doing here is taking whatever's been sent in on the current request and just returning it. This means that we only ever see the data from the current request, and once that request is ended, that data is effectively lost. We already have our Redis storage implementation, and we know that when we call the add function, behind the scenes, that's going to put things into a list inside Redis. We also need to provide the mocked implementation of this same functionality. And for that, we're going to use an in-memory data store, or to you and me, an array. I've copied and pasted the Redis storage mock that we've been using in previous tests. And I'm going to make some small adaptations here. Firstly, because we're going to share the list of games between two different functions, I'm going to extract out the list of games into its own separate variable. The mocked implementation of the add function isn't going to be as complex as the real implementation. So the real implementation allows us to pass in a list name, and then that would look up that specific list inside our storage. So in Redis, it would look for that list by name. But of course, we don't really need that complexity in our test. So I'm going to bypass that, and whatever's passed in as the list name is just going to get sort of forgotten about, and we're always going to return that same list of games. Now this is fine for the purposes of this test because really that doesn't matter, but if things were to get more complex then maybe we would need to add in that functionality. As ever, keep things as simple as they can be until they need to be more complex. With this change made, when our tests run, we can see that we're getting back an empty list. This is fine because we don't actually have the implementation in place in our code, so let's get onto that now. The first change that I'm going to make is to extract out the hard-coded list name. I'm going to put this as its own separate variable. The reason for this is because we're going to reuse the list name for both the add and the get functions. And similarly, I'm going to need to call storage.redisstorage multiple times. So once for add, once for get. I don't really want to do this, so I'm just going to shortcut this in a way and store the outcome of storage.redisstorage on its own variable, which I'm just going to call store. Of course, you can call it anything. It's completely arbitrary. Defining these variables was effectively boilerplate, but with those things out of the way, we can get onto the real implementation. So I'm going to use this new store variable to access the add function. I'm going to pass in that list name and then the item that we want to put into our list. It's pretty straightforward at this point. We've done all the validation and so on. So we know that if we're here, then things must be in a happy path situation. So I'm just going to use the add game request dot name property. And at this stage, we're pretty much there. I'm going to tidy up this code a little bit, remove the commented out code, but I'm going to keep the comment that says we're getting all the games in the list that we know about because that is what we're doing and I've got similar comments elsewhere in the code. With that change made, let's check in on our test suite now and we can see that we're in a nice passing state. Now there's actually a bug here and that's that the same game can be added to the list multiple times. So as a challenge to you, I would suggest adding in another test to cover this possibility and then change the implementation to stop or mitigate this bug. When you've done this, post your solution in the comments below. 